الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on with our study of a sula sitta by using the sharh of Allama Zaid ibn Muhammad al-Madkhali rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah we reach the sixth principle which is the last principle uh, the last or the sixth asl from hadha sitta asul from those six, six um, principles or six fundamentals and it goes <coughs> as follows the Imam said, meaning Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he said the sixth principle, refuting the doubt that shaitan has placed concerning abandonment of the Quran and the Sunnah and instead following the desires and opinions that are divided and differing. Sheikh Zaid rahmatullahi commented, I wonder what is this doubt which these misguided ones have mentioned and which has been inherited from them by those who are like them. And Sheikh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab said, It is that the Quran and the Sunnah cannot be understood except by someone who is a mujtahid al mutlaq, you know, so who's an absolute jurist. Uh, and the mujtahid is described with such and such attributes which perhaps are not found together even in Abi Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Uh, this this uh, principle is a refutation as Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned of the doubt that shaitan had placed in especially in the hearts of many of the believers in that they can't understand the Quran and the Sunnah. And this opposes the view of Ahl Sunnah in that there are many things which are very clear from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which do not require extensive uh, explanation that these commands are very clear and these especially that are, command, that are commands with regards to these usul that we have mentioned, the other five usul, talking about ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, all the other usul, and not to to divide, you know, being one ummah, and not to divide into groups and sects, all of those things are very clear, and devoting one's ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and avoiding shirk, those are clear muhkam, those are clearly supported from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that do not require that a scholar uh, necessarily um, explain that in the most basic terms. If Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands you in the Quran وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْءٍ Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with Him you do not have to ask whether shirk is lawful or shirk is unlawful uh, that those things are very clear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited that so it means it is impermissible to do that likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us in that same ayat Allah commanded us to worship him and him alone so it is does not require a scientist nor does it require a great mujtahid uh, as is mentioned an absolute jurist to um, to discern that for the, the layman, the lay person can understand what is required of them in general from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, that does not mean that we don't need the, need the scholars and that does not mean that uh, that everyone is going to understand every single mas'ala. No, we need the scholars. And we need to study, we need to gain ilm nafia. We need to gain beneficial knowledge of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but this is a refutation of the doubt that was mentioned by the people of Bid'ah and who tried to hold the Book of Allah and the Sunnah and the Messenger of Allah and its interpretation hostage and deviate and cause deviation amongst the people because they 
we're the only ones who have the right to interpret everything with regards to the religion. So this is a refutation of that doubt that these people came with. Uh, and then the Sheikh said, he said, therefore this doubt is a false doubt because Allah the Almighty and Majestic revealed the entire Quran to the Ummah and directed them to contemplate over it when Allah the Blessed and Exalted said, so remind whosoever fears my threat with the Quran. In Surah Al-Qaf, verse 45. And then the Sheikh said, so how can they be reminded with something that they cannot understand? Indeed, that is preposterous. And Allah the Almighty and Majestic said about the affair of his book, and that those of understanding would be reminded. In Surah al uh, as, uh, uh in verse uh, 29. And then the Sheikh mentioned, that is all of the people of intellect. Indeed, we have made the Qur'an easy for remembrance. So are, so are there any who will remember? And this is Surah Al-Qamar, verse 17. The Shaykh, uh, the Shaykh com commented on this verse. He said, meaning, is there anyone who will receive a reminder or an admonition or benefit from the ayat of the Qur'an? In truth, even if some of the ayat of the Qur'an are recited to the people with the least amount of knowledge, meaning the people that are ignorant, the people who don't know much about their deen, but they have basic understanding, then they will be able to understand them merely by listening to them, such as the statement of Allah, the blessed and exalted, and your deed is one, in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 163. So again, as I mentioned, that Tawheed and Shirk and establishing the Salat, all of these things are clear commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that do not require that a person is, is steeped in an immense amount of knowledge, but rather even the children is, that understand any basic, basis of language that they can uh, understand those commands and that those commands are, are something that they should do. So when this sentence is recited to the intellectuals, they come to know that Allah, the blessed and exalted alone, is their deity who is deserving of worship. So he is the one whom it is obligatory to worship and to follow his commands, avoid his prohibitions, and obey his messengers. And when the intelligent person hears the statement of Allah, the exalted, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, maintain with care the prayers, in, the, in particular the middle prayer, and stand before Allah devoutly obedient in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 238. Uh, the Shaykh comments about that. He said he has understood, meaning the intellectuals, that Allah uh, has commanded him with maintaining the prayers to the extent that he is not even in need of asking a scholar about their ruling except if he asks about the details of how to perform them. And he knows that Allah has commanded him whenever he hears the statement of Allah, the exalted, and they were not commanded except to worship Allah before uh, being sincere to him in religion, inclining to the truth, and to establish the prayer, and to give the zakat. And that is the uh, correct religion. In Surah Al-Bayna, verse uh, 5. So that shows us there are many ayat and many commands uh, from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that are very clear commands that don't require excessive explanations. They don't require you to be a scholar to understand. It don't require excessive interpretation. They're very clear commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al, uh, uh, Al Ali Imran, He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Min whom ayatul muhkamat humu umul kitab, ukhra mutashabihad. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that from his signs, from his ayat, from his verses, from the verses in the Qur'an, contained in the Qur'an, are the Ummul Kitab, the Muhkamat, those verses which are clear, that have, give clear, decisive rulings that don't require, that are unambiguous. Wuhumul Ummul Kitab, that those are the main uh, verses of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the commands of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. They're very clear. They don't require uh, ext extensive istifsar, you know, explanations, unless, of course, as the Sheikh mentions, 
regarding details, for example, details of the prayer. But we don't need, we don't need, you don't need to go to ask a scholar necessarily if you have to pray. That's clear. It's clear from the Book of Allah. You don't have to ask whether Tawheed is the foundation of Islam, that we should call to Tawheed, that we should worship Allah, that we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the general meaning of Tawheed, that's very clear from the Book of Allah and the Son of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the person will understand that Allah the Almighty and Majestic has co uh, commissioned the Ummah with these obligatory duties, which consists, consists of his Tawheed, establishment of the prayer, giving the zakat, holding on to the true religion, and other than that, from what is commissioned in the ayat of the Qur'an. The people can understand it by merely reading it or listening to it. And there is no doubt that with regards to some of the ayat of the Qur'an and the text of the Sunnah, the people are in need of the scholars to explain the ruling, the ahkam, the rules and regulations, the halal, the haram, and whatever is in the Qur'an of exhortion and warning. From here it becomes obligatory upon those under obligation to learn and believe that the source of goodness and the foundation of the religion is whatever is taken from the noble Qur'an and from the authentic sunnah of the Prophet And it becomes obligatory to learn that the book and the sunnah are a convenient and easy affair. It is not difficult except to the one who has turned away from it and distanced himself from the book of his Lord and the authentic sunnah of his Prophet wasallam. So this one has oppressed himself. And this, one whom, and this is the one whom Allah has mentioned in his truthful statement. And whoever is blinded from remembrance of the most merciful, we appoint, we appoint for him a devil. And he is to him a companion. So, uh, then the Shaykh mentions, he says, that is, he is turned away and distanced himself from the remembrance of Allah contained within the book in the Sunnah. And whoever turns away from the book in the Sunnah, then nothing will remain with him except the inspiration of, shayat, uh, of, of the Shaytan, which turns one over to shirk with Allah, misguidance, innovation, desires, and division. So this is a very important point that the Sheikh is mentioning and that is understood from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that with regards to these basic commands that are mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wa that they are basic and easily understood and they're unambiguous and except for the person, a person of doubts and the person who is allowing their shubahat and the shahwat, their the doubts and false beliefs and their lack of certainty overtake them and their desires to overtake them and consume them to such an extent that then it becomes that there are shayateen that are appointed to them who will continue them on their path of misguidance وَعِيَادًا بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ So it's very important for us to strive our best to adhere to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those clear commandments from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and ask about those things which we do not understand and with regards to the more intricate details and other commandments in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam follow the command of Allah Azza wa Jal where he says فَأَسَلَّهْ لِذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ and ask the people of knowledge if you don't understand. And so it's very clear that there are clear commandments uh, from the Quran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, that are mahkam, that are clear, unambiguous. And then there are those ayat which require explanation and are known to the people of knowledge. They are known to Ahl al ilm to Ulal al bab they, they know and understand those things.
ولا يعلمون تأويله إلا الله وراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما وما يذكر إلا أولى أولى الباب. So Allah subhanahu wa taala makes it clear that there are those verses that are unambiguous and there are those verses that are liable to other interpretation. But it's not that no one understands them, but rather Ahl al-Ilm understands them and that we should return to Ahl al-Ilm in those things which are not clear for us, in which we require uh, additional explanation, additional uh, assistance in interpreting and Com comprehending so that way we can practice and come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal and exhibit Taqwallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that by forgetting Him subhanahu Allah will cause you to forget yourself. And by forgetting Him tabarak wa ta'ala that the servant will be misled by the shayateen from amongst mankind in the jinn. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whoever is blinded from remembrance of the most merciful, we appoint for him a devil, and he is to him a companion. The Shaykh mentioned, he said, that is, he has turned away and distanced himself from the remembrance of Allah, contained within the book of Allah and the Sunnah. And whoever turns away from the book and the Sunnah, then nothing will remain with him except the inspiration of Shaytan which turns one over to shirk with Allah, misguidance, innovations, desires, and divisions, and all of those, those evil, evils and ills that are mentioned, that the Shaykh mentioned, are the contradiction of these asul that we studied about sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding uh, shirk and avoiding innovation in the religion and following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uniting the Ummah based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and avoiding division. So all of those things, when you forget Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will appoint for you a companion from amongst the devils who you are already probably following and already joining with who will cause you to, to enjoin bid'ah, will cause you to enjoin shirk and violate tawheed, will cause you to cause enmity and hatred between the Muslims and disassociate with the, the Muslims and destroy the Muslim Brotherhood and unite upon bid'ah and go against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who commanded us, uh, first and foremost Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala commanded us to be one and to avoid differing. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, wa, wa lillahi jami'an wa la Hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Iftarakat al Yahud al Ita wa Sabein Farka, wa iftarakat al Nasara al Ita Natain wa Sabein Farka, wa sa taftariku hadi umma la thalatha wa Sabein Farka, kullaha fi nahr al Wahida. Kunna man hiya ya Rasulullah, qala man kana ala mithu ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al Yom." The Prophet ﷺ said, <coughs> "The Jews were breaking the seventy-one sects, Christians seventy-two sects, my umma into seventy-three sects, all of them in the fire except one." And then they, they wanted to know, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon, and my companions are upon. Letting us know we have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, be upon what he's upon, and his companions, Radiallahu Ta'ala Majma'in, which affirms for us the Salafi Madhab, the Salafi Minhaj, which is to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to the understanding of the pious predecessors, first and foremost at the uh, the head of them is the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiyallahu Tala'inu Majma'in and going against that means that the, that the people are beginning to divide and to follow those devils innovations their desires and division then the Imam the Mujaddid explained the statements of those of these ones whom he faced with the correct da'wah and battles ensued between him and them. So this is talking about Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab during his time, the opposition he he uh, ran into when calling the Tawheed, calling people, reviving the call back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And along with him were the leaders of, of Ali Sa'ud. Uh, may Allah bestow mercy upon their deceased and grant success towards everything that is good and righteous for their living. So this is the the statement of Sheikh uh, Zaid Rahmatullahi Rahmatul Wasiya. <clears throat> Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahhab Rahimullah Taala said, "So if a person is not like that, 
then he must turn away from them. If he is not a mujtahid, then he must turn away from the book and the sunnah by certain obligation, concerning which there is no doubt or ambiguity. ambiguity. And whoever seeks guidance from the Qur'an and the sunnah, then he is either a heretic or a madman due to the difficulty of understanding it. So this was the claim of those people, is that they had deviated so far from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they began to believe that only a heretic would go directly to those books and not go to the intercessors, and not go to the great mujtahideen, not go to the awliya, you know, to understand their Islam. So you can see and understand what had happened in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The people moved away from knowledge and the people allowed for the misguided ones to misguide them and took them as uh, awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and took them as to be the saints and the pious ones and took them to be the ulama and their evil dictates of just blind following taqlid in anything whether it's shirk, whether it's kufr, whether it's zandaka the people began to accept that and they began to move away from the book once you move away from the Quran and the Sunnah and you don't even attempt to understand the basic commandments of Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're susceptible to the wolves and the wolves of deviance, the wolves of misguidance that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned were on the Abwaab of Jahannam. Wa'iyadhu billah min thalika. A point I want to mention, so the Shaykh he mentioned about uh, the, the Saudi uh, family and dynasty and how they established uh, Tawheed. And, and there's no doubt we have to remember, no matter what sins that may exist and may have been witnessed, that there's no doubt that in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia that uh, Islam has been upheld. And the call to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has uh, immense impact an import in this society and is practiced and is practiced with the government and the government maintains that and this was the beauty and has been the beauty of Saudi Arabia of establishing the prayer for example the the places closing this aids the dawah this aids this aids people from just openly following their desires for those who don't want to pray no one's going to force you to pray but at least in business transactions and other things, everything is encouraging you to be, give you every opportunity to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there's nothing but good in that. Likewise, the commanding of the good and the forbidding the evil. People don't like that because it fights their desires. But this is, has been produced immense khair, regardless of what mistakes may have happened. But it, the overall effect is it produces a lot of khair in the society, to maintain important Islamic values. When we break down those institutions, then this is where it opens up the path and means for the shaitan and the shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn to, uh, uh, to overcome the society and overcome people. Likewise, a last an important point is there is no doubt in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia that they have done immense good in helping to spread the da'wah. So much of the books, so many du'at have come out of here and mashayikh around the world in many different countries and institutions have been established from their wealth and in their from their publications and from assisting the du'at and training them. And this we just say jazallahu khair because this is incredibly important because when we lose those benefits, no doubt if you don't have the wealth and assistance, which are means that Allah provides for supporting the da'wah, then the da'wah suffers. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves them, guides them from their mistakes, and corrects them and, and the Muslim leaders everywhere, that Allah guides them. Because when the Muslim rulers uh, uh, fail, this is a and deviate, this is a reflection of the society in general. And it is a uh, reflection of the ummah, the condition of the ummah, and the humiliation of the ummah. So that's why it's important to always, and from the madhab of the salaf, is to supplicate for the rulers, not supplicate against them. Even if, as the Prophet said, Walo akala, walo darba 
Wakanamalik. Even if they, you know, obe here in obeying the Muslim ruler, even if they each, even if they take your wealth unlawfully, meaning they're oppressing you because they're taking your wealth, and they're beating your back, meaning they're oppressing you, they are uh, maybe causing you physical harm, that you still obey them in righteousness. There's never an excuse to disobey goodness. It's about disobeying those things which contradict the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and maintaining those important kawaid of Ahlul Sunnah which is not to rebel against the ruler not to speak ill about the ruler especially in public and even in private gatherings if there's no benefit if there's no sharia maqsa no sharia benefit then there's no purpose for that meaning if you don't have a, a legitimate excuse meaning you're oppressed by a ruler for example and you articulate that to the ruler or someone who can advise the ruler or what have you and help you to get your rights, you know, through legal channels, then this is khair, this is your right. But to sit and just complain and get the people to hate the leaders, then this is away from the madhab of the Salaf, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many shortcomings and protect us from following that madhab. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. The Shaykh Muhammad ibn al-Wahar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, so if a person is not like that, then he must turn away from them. If he is not a mujtahid, then he must turn away from the book and the sunnah by certain obligation concerning which there is no doubt or ambiguity. Whoever seeks guidance from the Quran and the sunnah, then he is a heretic or a madman uh, to the rest of the statement that he said that we already mentioned. Uh, Sheikh Zaid commented about this, about this statement, this doubt that the people during the time of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab had, uh, that that had become widespread. He comments, this is how the ideologies of the common people were destroyed by those who claim knowledge in the time of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab. <coughs> Yet they were upon misguidance. <coughs> they would say to the people, if you wish to seek the guidance from the book and the sunnah, whilst you are Bedouins and from amongst the common people, then this is a sign of zandaka, of heresy. Uh, this is a type of uh, hypocrisy and, and, and disbelief. It is the most evil of sins. Or it, or it is proof of insanity. So this is the highest level of misguidance and deception amongst the people. So the Tao of the Zanadika is the opposite of the Tao of the messengers, alayhim athal salatu wasalam, and those who called with their Tao. And the messengers, alayhim salatu wasalam, did not call except with that which Allah revealed to them. Then they would convey it to the Ummah just as they heard it from Allah. Indeed, Allah the Almighty and Majestic commanded the Prophet وسلم, to openly proclaim his Iman in every book and in every messenger. Alayhim salatu wasalam, Allah the Exalted said, Say, I have believed in whatever Allah has revealed of a book. In Surah Al-Shura, verse 15. And his ummah followed him in that. It was upon them to say, we have believed in whatever Allah has revealed of a book and whatever he has sent as a messenger. This is in the following, this is in following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that say, says, say, we have believed in Allah and whatever has been revealed to us and whatever has been revealed to Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub and the descendants and whatever was given to Musa and Isa and whatever was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we submit to him, meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 136. This is the Aqidah of the believing Muslims. This is the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. This is the Minhaj, the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. Their source is the magnificent book of Allah and the authentic Sunnah of the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is upon the entire Ummah in every time and in every place to attempt to gain an understanding of the Qur'an and to learn from the Sunnah that which they have the capability for and to safeguard the understanding and the obligation upon them up until they are truly from amongst the awliya of Allah, from the truthful followers of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Indeed, the reason of the ignorance, the misguidance, and the distance from understanding the book and the Sunnah is turning away from the sittings of knowledge and the sittings of fiqh and the religion and being distanced distant from the scholars, whilst being immersed into whatever the people are upon from ignorance. And whosoever worships Allah without knowledge and without understanding for his worship, then his worship is not accepted, because the acceptance of any act of worship has three conditions, correctness, sincerity, and correctness of belief, or aqidah. So the meaning of correctness... <coughs> 
is that the act of worship must be done in the manner that Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intended. And sincerity means that the servant must direct all of his actions towards Allah alone to the exclusion of all else, whilst hoping for His pleasure and mercy and fearing His displeasure and His punishment. Then you must learn, O Muslim, that these principles were taken by Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala from the text of the Book of Allah and from the authentic sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we called them the six principles because it is obligatory upon every person under obligation, meaning Muslim, uh, let alone an adherent to the sunnah to understand them with a good understanding. So we must be competent and understand these, these, these principles. He must adopt whatever is within them from ahkam, rulings and legislation, and straightforward guidelines. And he must examine his own condition with regards to sticking to them and enveloping oneself in their shade. And the trust is with the law alone and reliance is placed upon him. Then he mentioned the statement of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahhab, Rahimullah Ta'ala said, So how free is Allah from all perfections and by His praise? How much has Allah explained both legislatively and by way of Qadr, divine decree, by way of His ability of creation and commanding and refuting this accursed doubt from various angles that have reached the level of general necessities? However, the majority of the people who do not, most people don't know. Indeed, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al -Kirid, Indeed, the word has come into effect upon most of them. So they do not believe. Indeed, we have placed shackles upon their necks, and they are to their necks, so they are with their heads aloft. And we have placed before them a barrier, and behind them a barrier, and covered them, so they do not see. And it is all the same for them, whether you warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe. You can only warn one who follows the message and fears the most merciful, unseen. So give him glad tidings of forgiveness and noble reward. This is Surah Yasin, verse 7 through 11. Thus ends the treaty, and the Sheikh ended with a, uh, a piece of poetry he, he made which encompasses these six pillars. And it has been translated into English, and so we'll try to give it its right, because this is how the Sheikh ended his explanation. So we will end it by his, uh, his poetry. Uh, and he entitled it, <clears throat> The Beneficial Foundations from the Minhaj of the People of Benef Beneficence in Akita. And before you is the text of the poem. And listen to the principles formulated by some of the Salaf. The revelation came with them by way of those who proceeded. The first of them is sincerity, O reasonable one. It was brought by the Quran and the beloved. Muhammad, the guide, the great prophet. He was sent by my Lord, the sublime, the honorable. The opposite of sincerity is objectionable shirk. shirk. And how many of its manifestations have not been rejected? O see, uh, so seek them, O brother and Iman, from the Sunnah of the Guide along with the Qur'an. Then there was unity along with harmony. A clear extending text came with it. And its opposite is a dangerous evil for you. My Lord the Exalted explained it, so understand. <coughs> in Ali, in, in Ali, uh, Ali Imran, it came clearly, and its light came in Al-Anfal. So understand, O youth, and in Surah al Room, there came a warning from every party that was rebuked by the Almighty. The third was to listen and obey the one who has been granted authority ordered to beware of the trials. So how many reports have come which obligate obedience to the ruler with a condition so know it well? I am referring to goodness that has been recorded by the Sharia and its opposite is the objectionable affair. Indeed it will not be accepted. And the fourth is knowledge that my Lord the Exalted has favored the scholars from the sky. So whoever desired to attain their excellence, then let him traverse the straight path like them. Whosoever shows enmity towards a scholar who acts upon his knowledge and truth, then that one has been tried. With war from my Lord since it has been decreed, and his defeat by the compeller has been validated by the informant. And the fifth is loving all of the awliya from those who believe in Allah and then observe taqwa. They are those whom my Lord has specified with a truthful promise. 
about his abode of the hereafter, the station of those who observe taqwa. This is not the case of one who merely speaks about the reality of the wali. From the aspect of the truth and, and the sent guidance, whether this one has lied, whether he has fabricated, fabric, fabricated. Indeed, the revelation in the minhaj of the warner have declared war upon him. And the sixth is certainty and exemplary knowledge that my Lord, with regards to the close friend, messenger, and recipient of his clear book, guides to the truth and a plain light. And whoever says that the book and the sunnan, their knowledge is trivial, such that he turns away from them, then that one is a heretic and he is submersed in trials. Due to the objectionable statement in his plain lie, upon every religious person who has learned concerning the Qur'an and has practiced the magnificent truth as his religion. In front of Allah, my Lord, besides whom there is no deity, the sublime, the mighty, and exalted in might, O Lord, grant us success to preserve the sunan and allow us to perform many good and excellent works. We hope for a reward along with your endless pleasure and pardon us always and forever. And send peace, O Lord, upon the Prophet and the family and the companions and likewise those who observe taqwa. Along with that, send salutations that fill whatever is between the heavens and your earth. This is it, so actualize it and learn it. And this was the end of the Sheikh's uh, piece of poetry and his explanation of Asul Asitta. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and put this to, on our scale of good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm and nafia, wa rizqan tayyiba, wa amalan mutaqabilan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from